Most people watching this video probably know that Alpha Centauri is the closest stellar system to Earth, not counting the solar system. But a lot less people know the second closest system. That title goes to Barnard Star, a small red dwarf about 6 light years away from Earth. It's somewhere around 10 billion years old, over double the age of the sun, and because of its close distance and fast speed, its motion across the galaxy is visible over the timescales of years, not centuries or thousands of years like most stars. Because of how close it is, the closest single star to Earth other than the sun, it's been extensively studied. We know it has flares, takes about 145 days to rotate, and could potentially be among the oldest stars in the galaxy. There have been proposed missions to explore it, similar to the popular Breakthrough Starshot proposal for Alpha Centauri. But what we didn't know until now was if Barnard Star had planets. The search for planets around Barnard Star goes back decades, long before the discovery of the first exoplanets, Poltergeist and Phobator, or even the first candidate exoplanet, Tadmor. The first claim of planets came in 1963, where data of the star going back to 1938 was used to claim the presence of two Jupiter-sized planets, about 80% and 110% the mass of Jupiter respectively. Many people accepted this at the time, and for a while, Barnard Star became the first star outside the solar system thought to host planets. However, there were problems. The method of detecting these planets was astrometry, watching how the star moves throughout the galaxy. If the star slightly wobbles on its path, it's probably being pulled on by some large object. Depending on how sharp the wobble is and how long it takes to make a full cycle, you can find the mass and orbit of a planet. That's how the two Barnard Star planets were detected. However, other astronomers using the same telescope hoped to find additional planets around other stars. So they pointed it to several other stars, and around every single one, they found two Jupiter-sized planets, about 80% and 110% the mass of Jupiter respectively. Clearly, something was wrong with the observatory. It was finding the exact same planets around every star it looked at. It turns out it was interference from the telescope creating the planet signals, not actual planets. So the two planets around Barnard Star were refuted by 1973. Over the next few decades, we weren't able to find any new planets around this star, but were able to confirm what wasn't there. Planets ten times larger than Jupiter anywhere in the system were confirmed to be possible to exist by 1995. Then, planets 80% the mass of Jupiter or larger, with orbits of less than 1,000 days, were also shown not to be there. In 2003, it was found that if there was a planet in the habitable zone of the star, where temperatures are right for liquid water to exist, it had to be less than 7.5 Earth masses. By 2013, even more types of planets were excluded. Super-Earths with orbits of less than 10 days weren't there, and neither were Neptune-sized worlds out to orbits lasting two years. It was found that Earth-sized planets in the habitable zone also don't exist. All in all, the chances for planets around the star kept going down and down. We basically don't expect any planet larger than Earth anywhere in the inner system at this point, with the outer system being devoid of gas giants. But the search for planets didn't end there. In 2018, another planet was reported to have been found around the star. A large, potentially rocky planet, about 3.2 times more massive than Earth, orbiting a star about 0.4 AU, 40% the distance Earth orbits the Sun, or closer than Mercury. However, because of Barnard's star's extremely small size of less than 20% the mass of the Sun, this planet, Barnard B, would have been extremely cold, somewhere around negative 274 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 170 Celsius. For comparison, that's about the same temperature as Saturn. This was especially exciting, as it was possible that this version of Barnard B may have been a cold, rocky planet, which is something we haven't discovered much of. It was also allowed under the restrictions we've found over the last few decades. And it was found that its orbit might be getting slightly perturbed, indicating the existence of a second, even further out planet. Until it was found that neither of these planets actually existed. In 2021 and 2022, it was confirmed that the radial velocity data used to claim the existence of these planets was due to stellar activity like flares and not actual planets. Once again, Barnard Star was demoted to having zero planets. With four planets once proposed and ultimately confirmed not to exist, it seemed as though we were having really bad luck with this star, similar to other stars like Lisa 581 or Caucasian with many refuted planets. Until August 2024 because data from Espresso and the Very Large Telescopes finally managed to confirm the existence of a planet around Barnard Star. And yet again, it's completely different than all other proposed planets, with evidence for several more. This is Barnard Star B, for real this time. A small rocky exoplanet taking just three days to orbit its star, similar to other red dwarf systems we've discovered like TRAPPIST-1. It's the first exoplanet discovered around Barnard Star to have very strong evidence for its existence, and it is almost certainly real and actually exists. It's just 37% the mass of Earth, or three times more massive than Mars. Despite its star being so dim, it's still close enough to be very hot, with an estimated temperature of 257 degrees Fahrenheit, or 125 Celsius. 
We don't know anything else about it other than its mass, orbit, and estimated temperature yet, since it was only discovered very recently. But from what we do know about this planet, we can guess that it's extremely similar to another world discovered a few years earlier, Proxima d. Proxima d is similar to Barnard b in temperature, 188 degrees Fahrenheit or 87 Celsius, and in mass being about 30% the mass of Earth. It takes five days to orbit its star, Proxima Centauri, compared to Barnard b's three. Both planets orbit a red dwarf, and both planets are very close to the Sun, four and six light years away, around the first and second closest systems. This is already pretty interesting, as we now know that there are two extremely similar small, hot, rocky exoplanets in our stellar neighborhood. But the study confirming Barnard b doesn't end with just one planet. In the same study, three additional planets were suggested to exist around the star. These other three aren't yet confirmed, but if they are, they would make Barnard's star a four-planet system. All four of these planets are pretty similar in mass, between 0.17 and 0.32 Earth masses at minimum, though they could be larger. All four orbit closer to their star than the habitable zone, making them all too hot for liquid water to exist on their surfaces. From what we can tell, this is essentially a smaller, hotter version of TRAPPIST-1. If these three candidates are confirmed, then it's a closely packed system of small planets, like TRAPPIST-1, just smaller than Earth instead of Earth-sized. The innermost planet candidate would take two days to orbit Barnard's star, while the outermost takes six days. For comparison, the first planet of the TRAPPIST-1 system takes 1.5 days to make an orbit, and the outermost takes 19 days. For another comparison, Proxima d and its sibling planet Proxima b take 5 and 11 days to orbit their star. So the planets of Barnard's star, if all of them are confirmed, will be closer together to one another than the planets of Proxima Centauri or TRAPPIST-1. So, assuming all these new planets do actually exist, what are they like? If confirmed, they're some of the closest planets to the solar system. When we start exploring other stars, these planets will likely be among our first targets. I mentioned Breakthrough Starshot earlier, the mission concept to send a thousand solar sail-powered spacecraft to Alpha Centauri in 20 years. Barnard's star is well within range of a Breakthrough Starshot-type mission as well. These will probably be some of the most important exoplanets we know of due to their close distance to us, so can we guess as to what their environments are like now? Yes, we can. Just be aware that right now, as I said earlier, we only know for a fact that one out of these four planets exists, and we only know its mass, orbit, and an estimate for its temperature. That's not a lot to work off of, so everything I say will be highly speculative. But I will be basing it off what we know about other similar planets, like Proxima d and TRAPPIST-1b. Based on what we know about the size of Barnard b and its potential neighbors, as well as our very good data about the flare activity of Barnard's star, and the studies of the atmospheres of the TRAPPIST-1 planets, we can guess that these planets are likely airless rocks. Red dwarf planets have a hard time holding on to atmospheres already, and we know that even to this day, Barnard's star has pretty strong flares. However, if a planet's atmosphere is replenished faster than it can be stripped away, whether it be a magnetic field blocking radiation or volcanic activity getting more gases into the atmosphere, or a mix of both, planets around red dwarfs could host atmospheres. However, larger rocky planets will have this easier. They'll have stronger gravitational pulls, making the atmosphere have a harder time escaping, and will have a larger molten core, making for a stronger magnetic field, and more internal heat for more volcanic activity. Basically, the larger a rocky planet is, the more likely it is to host an atmosphere. But Barnard b and its unconfirmed siblings are small. They have minimum masses about one-third the mass of Earth. That's bigger than Mars, but smaller than Venus. So they'll not only likely have weaker magnetic fields and less volcanic activity unless tidal forces increase them, but will also have weaker gravities, making it harder for them to hold on to an atmosphere. That, combined with Barnard star's strong flares, and the fact that these planets could potentially be 12 billion years old, they are likely airless. 12 billion years is more than long enough to have their atmosphere stripped away, and even potentially for the volcanic activity of the planet to have died off as it cools down. This isn't confirmed, but if I had to guess as to what Barnard B or its potential neighbors are like, I would describe them as hot Callistos. Callisto is a dead world with the most cratered and old surface in the solar system, and there's a decent chance that these planets are also dead. The difference being Callisto is made of ice and way colder, and these planets are likely made of rock, assuming they formed where they are today. But being dead doesn't make these planets not interesting, even Callisto is still an extremely interesting moon. And again, this is just a guess. We don't have the data to actually say anything about the environments of these planets, this was simply an educated guess based on what we know about other planets. But no matter what, whether Barnard Star's planets are dead or something we don't expect, this is still an incredible discovery. 
For the first time, a planet has finally been found around the second closest star to Earth, with the potential for three more. As I said earlier, these planets are within range of a breakthrough Starshot-type mission, and if one of those ever happens with Alpha Centauri, which I don't consider very likely, chances are Barnard Star will be our next target. The closer a planet is to Earth, the easier it is to study, so hopefully we can find out a lot more about Barnard B and confirm the other planets in the system soon. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.